young ladies that work here see the same ghost here and describe the ghost the same way. It's a young woman in a long dress with her hair tied up, sort of Victorian style. Hi, I'm Jenny DeHuff and I'm in Mount Joy, Pennsylvania. Nestled in this tiny Lancaster County town is a historic brewery. And this place is like none other. Here you'll find unique dining experiences, sword fights, and oh yeah, ghosts. And should you choose to stay the night, you can choose, actually, I think I'd rather show you. So Mr. Booby, he came here and built this place from the 1860s, 1870s, 1880s. He created this wonderful complex of buildings around us. There used to be hundreds of little breweries like this. I tell people to picture back in the days when you got your bread from the bakery down the street, you got your milk from the local dairy, you got your beer from the brewery that was near you. My name is Sam Allen, and I do a variety of things. Owner isn't really a job, it's a condition, and I'm also the owner. Wow, this place is so unique. This is the original hotel that was built in 1879. I'm James Ellerby. I'm an actor and a tour guide. It was built by Alois Booby and his family. Unfortunately, there were some discrepancies about who ended up owning the place after Alois died. Believe it or not, his youngest daughter ended up working here as a maid, completely cut out of her family's inheritance. And even to this day, customers have actually complained about hearing somebody sweeping the floors in the middle of the night. We just tell people, oh, that must have been Tecla Booby, Aloise's daughter. Old hotels are notorious for being haunted. And I believe that's because so much happens in old hotels. People were living here and getting married here and doing important things here. It seems to leave some sort of presence behind. Every spirit in this brewery has a story and a real person behind who they were in life, I think is imprinted on the building and carries on to who they are in death. So I told the crew, the goal for today was to scare you. But what they don't know, what Ethan, the camera guy, doesn't know is the joke's on him. <laughs> the rooms are so unique. How many are there on this floor? There are eight rooms on this floor. So is this where the daughter stayed? Yes, this is the Scheherazade room. Back when it was built in 1879, this would have been just a normal hotel room and it ended up being the room that Tekla was forced to live in after she was kicked out of her old childhood room. So this is the Mardi Gras room. This is the place where the first person actually stayed. This bed looks like it's floating. This is actually our Japanese style room. The bed is floating to make it look more like the old fashioned Japanese mats where you're lying down on the ground. But we wanted to have it kind of felt like it was raised up too. Okay, where are the wild cats in this room? Yeah, welcome to the jungle room. You could tell by the aesthetic. We really wanted to try to get that feel of being in a South American jungle. There's actually a reason why this room actually looks the way it does. Alois Booby was also a big game hunter. Uh, he was part of a hunting club, so we really wanted to kind of pay homage to the different adventures that he would have gone on. So what differentiates the naughty princess room from the nice princess room? Well, I see you've already noticed the hooks and chains around, right? I have. Besides, the uh, naughty princess room is always more popular. <laughs> All these old breweries had a hotel attached to them, typically. You can still find a few of these in Germany, but nowhere in America, and that's largely because of prohibition. It ended the relationship between hotels and breweries. They would have built a brewery and had a hotel attached to it, and they usually lived in the hotel part. They would actually move into the hotel, live there with their family, rent rooms to the public, and have a brewery behind the hotel, and that was very typical. This is the only one left in the country where the whole complex is essentially in its original condition. We have a lot of the old equipment. We have the underground cellars. This place is before refrigeration, so you needed to have underground cellars, and that's what we call the catacombs. Whoa, is this the catacombs? 
So yes, you are now about 43 feet below ground level into the original catacomb system. During Alois Booby's time, it would have been used for barreling and fermenting, but this is a connection of a larger cave system that was used way longer than Alois was even here in the 1860s. Is there a story behind these candles behind us? So yeah, we currently light them. It's a continuation of something that's been going on even longer than Alois Booby. So people were already using these cave systems for whatever end, we don't know. There's the old original brewery here. It's not used for anything today other than being part of our museum presentation. The fermentation room is in its original condition, big fermenting tanks. Back there are the last four pre-Prohibition era lagering tanks in the United States that are fully intact. You have to leave the country to see anything older than what you're looking at back there. In 1880, you could have come here and had a Boobies beer, a meal in their hotel from the kitchen, and you could have stayed and slept here. In 2023, you can come here and eat here, get a beer here, and you can sleep here. It's a living museum. I think it's kind of fun that we are able to handle it that way. This is definitely one of the most unique restaurants I've ever been to. Can you tell me a little bit about the food? We actually have two different kitchens. One is meant for the upstairs, but down here in the catacombs kitchen, it's a completely different, unique restaurant that's separate from our main bar. So this is Phil. He's my date for this evening and an actor here. Phil, so what am I eating? This is the pork asabuco. It's a pork shank with Brussels sprouts and mashed potatoes. Looks delicious. Very good. So this is one of your dining areas, right? Yeah, so we actually do feast shows down here and we do different themed events, including a pirate feast where pirates are sword biting and swashbuckling to medieval feasts where people are literally jousting through the aisles and playing songs and stuff like that. Oh, there you are. Why are you so upset? We do two major types of shows because we don't have an auditorium or a theater as such here. We have no arrangements with Heinrich. We decided to create a murder mystery dinner and we decided to create a feast dinner in the catacombs. Two very different things, but both much smaller numbers, which is nice because it makes it intimate, I think. As far as the future goes, this place really deserves to be honored properly. And I'm hoping that somebody that's in the brewing business wants to come get involved here someday and continue what we've spent 40 years starting here. It's the only one of these little German lager beer breweries left in its original condition. And I would love to grow old thinking that it's in capable hands. Booby's Brewery is about 90 minutes from Philadelphia. So if you're not afraid of ghosts, and you're down for a little adventure, I highly recommend you give it a try. Thanks for watching ABC Localish.